now uh, recording. Uh, right, so we've got, uh, uh, as expected, people working from home. Um, uh, so Richard's in Surrey, Martin can hear us working from home today. Thank you, Martin. So that's good, uh, people can hear us. Um, we'll give it another 30 seconds, just in case we get any, uh, any more uh, late arrivers before we kick off. Anybody else? Uh, uh, Dave in Warrington, actually in the office. Wow, well done, Dave. Uh, so am I, strangely enough, uh, living in uh, rural North Norfolk where I get one megabyte of broadband. <laughs> um, doing uh, webinars and Zoom calls and things is a little challenging. Um, you, you, you say that, Will, like, like because everyone's home, I've got like a decent broadband connection on my street. And yesterday, you I was used to. Yeah, I, <laughs> yesterday I was struggling to upload a video. It was unbelievable. It was like going back to the 90s. Yes. Right. Uh, let's let's get cracking, everybody. Uh, thank you for uh, taking half an hour uh, out of your uh, uh, your schedules to to join Phil and I this morning. Um, uh, we are going to spend the next half an hour uh, talking a bit about, um, particularly given the circumstances we're in at the moment, what capitalise. Uh, are seeing in the market, what capitalizers are hearing from their accounting partners, but also what they're hearing from uh, government in terms of financial support and, and so on. Um, so I'm going to jump over and just uh, put my slides up on screen to, to start off with. Um, so uh, uh, the, the first thing is that we as App Advisory Plus are running uh, an app of the month uh, webinar. This is our second. Uh, we did a webinar with Fathom last month and we're delighted that, that Phil has joined us from Capitalize uh, this morning. Very timely really that it's Capitalize that, that we are talking about uh, this month, uh, given what's going on in, in the market at the moment. Um, so uh, uh, hopefully uh, you've come across App Advisory Plus. We are uh, working to support accountants uh, and bookkeepers and uh, deliver revenue from the app ecosystem supporting uh, you guys uh, and helping you support your clients effectively in terms of making better use of apps uh, through our directory knowledge base helpline uh, and so on uh, but i don't want to talk about us um, i'm uh, uh, joined by phil hobden from capitalize this morning phil do you want to give people a very brief introduction to phil hobden Hey, good morning, everyone. So, uh, as Will said, Phil Hobden, Head of Education here at Capitalize.com. Been with Capitalize for about nine months, um, and previously to that, uh, worked for uh, forecasting application, and previous to that, banking and finance. So, my my kind of previous 10 years have been within the banking, finance, and, 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 and that kind of field. So, really happy to join you today here, Will, uh, on this webinar. Thank you, Phil. Uh, and uh, I, I didn't say who I am, but I'm Will Farnell, uh, Director of uh, uh, App Advisory Plus and also Farnell Clark. Um, so we had, we had an agenda uh, when we planned this webinar uh, uh, a month or so ago now, uh, and we said that we were going to talk about what uh, uh, are seeing in terms of what's working firms uh, who are uh, doing things that are not compliance. Um, so rather than talk specifically about advisory because that's different to everybody, um, what are the things that Capitalize are seeing firms do uh, successfully uh, beyond the realm of, of accounts and bookkeeping? Um, what opportunities to Capitalize uh, see opening up for accountants um, uh, in terms of uh, greater adoption of technology? Um, certainly one of the things Capitalize talk a lot about is uh, the opportunity left by uh, by the closure of high street banks uh, and i'm sure we'll talk about some of that what's likely to change in 2020 uh, in terms of uh, this advisory thing whatever that is and what's on the horizon for capitalize so that was a plan um, uh, but i'm sure everybody is aware that we are in uncertain times um, and uh, that there's a big big shift i think in terms of of, of what accountants need to be doing themselves, but more importantly for their clients uh, over the coming weeks and months, um, it is inevitable that, that, that clients are going to face challenging times. Um, that's not just financially, um, it's, it's looking at the opportunities for them to get through these, uh, these periods of time when uh, their staff can't be in the office, shops are closing, restaurants are closing, 
Um, so finance is going to be important, cash is going to be important, but there's a whole lot more. We are certainly going to look at what's on the horizon for Capitalize. Now, we're going to talk about some of this stuff, um, but actually the goalposts have moved and I think it's it's actually far more uh, valuable to, to look at uh, uh, certainly what Phil's seeing from Capitalize. Uh, certainly, I, I ran my, uh, my accounting firm mentoring group yesterday, um, which was... Um, uh, quite a, uh, an, an interesting thing to do because I'm somebody that is naturally very positive um, uh, and optimistic uh, and I think that I'd kind of got some blinkers on in terms of, of the reality of what's going on and um, so I'll share some of that as well as we go through the session. So that was a plan Phil, we, we, we're going to uh, adapt that a little bit and talk very topically about what's going on right now but before we do that just in case anybody doesn't know um, can you give a, a, a quick elevator pitch in terms of who Capitalize are, what you do and, and, and what's important? Absolutely. Thanks, Will. So Capitalize is an advisor led funding platform. So we've partnered with 107 ish lenders across the UK. So whether it be traditional lenders such as banks, uh, fintech lenders or even kind of independent lenders. And the idea of Capitalize is that we will work with you as an accountant to give you access, give your clients access to that suite of lenders. And that's across the whole debt lending landscape. So that's not just working capital, but working capital is hugely important. You're looking at everything from asset finance to invoice finance to new products like uh, merchant cash advance. As a business, we've been around since 2016 and we've lent, oh, I would say approximately 170 million into SMEs into the UK via the accountancy channel. And the reason we like working with accountants, really simple statistic. When a business owner partners with an accountant to seek funding, they are four times more likely to get the funding they need. That is, for me, a game-changing statistic. And that's why accountants are core to actually that relationship with SMEs and funding. And, you know, I'd probably say more than ever right now. Thank you, Phil. Uh, so I'm going to stop the screen share uh, so you guys can uh, uh, can see uh, see us because there's no value in slides at the moment. Um, so uh, uh, take, taking that 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 point, Phil, about the the accountants um, uh, supporting acceptance rates on on loans and uh, uh, and so on. I guess the, uh, a lot of your messaging is around the the fact that it's not as easy for, for clients to, to access funding because they can't walk into their bank. The likelihood is certainly the smaller SMEs are in a situation where uh, they don't have a personal relationship manager anymore. Um, so it makes it more difficult. And certainly a lot of the things that, that I talk to, to accounting firms about is the importance of rebuilding relationships. I talk about an analogy of 25 years ago, accountants got invited to the client's birthdays, weddings, funerals, because it's the kind of relationships that, that we had with clients. But over the last 20 or so years, something's changed and it's, it's called compliance. And compliance got so damn complicated that the focus of the accountant went from having these great relationships with their clients to keep our bank out of jail by making sure that we file the tax returns on time and we get the RTIs done and we get the auto enrollments done and, and all of that other stuff that we have to do. And the relationships are the things that have been sacrificed in that. Um, but we've got this technology now that, that is automating more of that compliance work, which means we can rebuild these relationships. Um, and it's the key to anything that's advisory related. Um, and, and you're absolutely right in terms of uh, the, the fact that we should hear when clients need, need money, they need support, they need loans, they need uh, uh, investment to grow, uh, we're the right people to talk to. But the challenge and the bit that capitalise are, are filling the gap is if we haven't got corporate finance teams, then where do we go? Where do we go to, to help our clients with that? And that's the gap you're filling, right? Yeah, totally. If you imagine, right, there are 360 lenders in the UK currently today. How the hell do you find that? So let me talk you through some behaviours of SME. So if an SME was to do this themselves, and I, I talk through this on my training sessions with accountants, right? So if SMEs are to do this themselves, in, on average, they will start looking for finance seven days before they need it. Now, I don't know about you, but I've been on holiday a few times over the last years, and I tend to plan my holidays 100 200 days in advance. I'm a little bit over-organized to be fair. But 
I spend more time doing that than businesses spend looking for finance. And when they do decide they need finance, they spend less than an hour researching it and then typically go to one lender, which is usually their bank. If the bank says no, and banks do say no, right? Banks look for a very specific type of lending in general. If the banks say no, then most or a lot of SMEs will go, well, actually, if my bank won't lend to me, who will? Yeah. And they get disheartened. They start making late payments. They start using credit cards or overdrafts to, to, to kind of facilitate those payments. Mm -hmm. So that behavior of an SME is, is crucial. Now, if you think what, what kind of compounds that, 76% of SMEs hold less than £10,000 on account. So £10,000 in their bank account. So in times like now, Exactly. In normal yeah. times, right? In normal times, having ten thousand pounds cash available to hand can make it tight if if one supplier pays late. Yeah. Today, that's that's just that could be terminal, right? So it it, it could yeah. be a massively massive impact. And if a business is waiting seven days before they need it, and then going out to the market and panicking and and doing all these these bad behaviours, it's going to add that stress. It's going to make it worse. It's not going to help them. Yeah. And that, and that £10,000 example, of course, uh, the 25th of March is a key date um, for, for lots of businesses. It's, it's quarterly rent payments. Um, uh, and if the revenue's dried up, then in, in however many days it is, we're 19th, aren't we? So in, in less than a week's time, everybody's got a rent bill to pay. Yeah. Um, and, and that's going to take that 10 grand straight out. Um, so we then, we then have problems. So we're, we're, we're into coronavirus. Uh, so we're, uh, the, I know that, that Capitalize uh, have, have created a, a page where you guys are, uh, are updating as you get, you get news. Um, we're going to share that link at the end of, uh, end of the session for everybody. If you haven't seen it yet, uh, I've certainly shared it with, with my team. And that's a, that's a really valuable resource for us in terms of how the businesses access these, these grants, how do they access the, the subsidized loans. Uh, and you guys are going to be keeping that up to date. What else are, are Capitalize doing? I mean, I know, uh, uh, I know Paul's a uh, previous in, investment uh, banker. Paul Serti is one of the co-founders of uh, uh, of capitalized so he, he kind of understands this stuff he's putting lots of content out what what are you guys what are you guys seeing talk generally and uh, about what you're seeing right now yeah absolutely so i mean what we're seeing is what you'd expect to see right it's a lot of people coming to accountants a lot of businesses coming to accountants saying look we're going to need to access these funds we're going to need to access lending we are going to need this additional support so those conversations are already happening and we're just like one week into not the most extreme of lockdowns, but, you know, social distancing. So we're a week into that and already businesses are starting to feel that. Now, two, three, four weeks into that, actually, that's going to be panic mode for a lot of businesses. I've got a friend who runs a, a, a business. I was chatting to him last night and I was like, yeah, he's a small business for employees. And he's yeah. already saying to me, look, we're going to need lending to pay our wage bill because either we lay the staff off yeah. or we need lending. And so that's kind of what, what we're seeing from, from that perspective. From a, from a lender's perspective, you know, it's very much open for business, right? So we, if you think about the lending market, so there's, in general, the UK lending market is £360 billion. The government have just pledged to put £330 billion into that. So you, the government have effectively said we are going to double the amount of lending in the SME market. So personally, I think huge kudos to, to, to the government and to the Bank of England. I think you know, what they've done is, is, is dramatic and yeah. you know, will make a difference. But it's accessing that, right? It, it's being able to get that money to the businesses that need it when they need it. Yes. And there's going to be, you know, banks are going to be overwhelmed from a, from a kind of a a, a, a standpoint of businesses going to them directly um yeah. and they're going to be equally impacted by limited contacts and everything else so what we're doing to support that is, is a couple of a couple of different things obviously putting out loads of content right so as you said paul former investment banker super queued up on all of this stuff and paul's talking to lenders on a daily hourly basis getting their opinions getting their kind of take on what's going to happen how we can help support that so content's key, and, and this afternoon, Paul and Carl Reader um, from PI um, and many other things, I've got a webinar where they're going to be talking about that as well. 
Yeah. From our perspective, from my perspective, I'm putting in extra training dates, right? So we've got accountants coming to us saying, we need to know how to support our clients better. So I'm gonna run a couple of extra training sessions online for our existing account accountants, the new accountants, so I can kind of upskill them with that knowledge that we put into our pro training and our partner training to be able to have those conversations, to be able to know what to talk about and be able to kind of support SMEs better. Yeah. And, and uh, I mean, the, ob the obvious thing here, and I've seen, I've seen it already in terms of people are talking about this is loans. Um, uh, so they've got to be paid back. There's, there's interest and we, we're talking about kind of lost revenue uh, here. So if you're talking about a, a retail business or a hospitality business, if they're closed for six weeks, then that, that revenue has gone. Um, yeah. And they're taking on extra debt. I mean, what what's what do what do you think lenders? How are lenders going to look at this? What should what do you think accountants should be doing to kind of manage this risk exposure for their clients in terms of taking on more more debt when there's there's a risk that who knows what's going to happen on the other side? Absolutely. I think <clears throat> I think the first thing is to not assume anything, right? And it's to, I think the first thing, so, so one of the things I always talk to, to, to people about, uh, part of my training is, is to ask a simple question. That question is, tell me about your business for the next 12 to 24 months, right? So what are your plans? What are your goals? What are your aspirations? Actually, that question now is, how is COVID-19 going to impact your business? And ask that question, and ask that question to absolutely everyone every SME you speak to, because it's not just about finance. Finance is huge, no. right? It's a huge impact. But actually it's about how else you can support. So I think back to my former life as a uh, working in forecasting and reporting, right? Actually, you know, when does that cash runway run out for businesses? Because actually if it runs out in three months, mm. you know, you can, you know, you're going to be pretty well equipped for, the, the the lending that the government's putting in place but remember when we yes. had the loan scheme years ago you know it it suffered from red tape right so you know there was still some issues around the transmission method and that's the bit for us that's not clear is what is the transmission method of these new funds yes because actually if it's going to be four to 12 weeks that might not be fast enough it's not going to be quick enough is it goes back to 25th of March, rent bills and uh, VAT bills on the on the 7th, although we know that H we're seeing already that HMRC have been pretty relaxed about, about payments. So that's, that's really yeah. positive. But I, I, think, I think actually it's understanding each of your businesses individually, each of your clients individually, and knowing what, they, what their position is, and, and then kind of managing that expectation. So look, if, if we're in trouble in, in two weeks' time, that's a very different approach than actually, you know, we've got three to six months uncomfortable, yeah. but still we can run three to six months. Yeah, sure. Uh, and, and those listening in, uh, there's a, there's a Q and a box, uh, here. So, uh, do feel free to pop some questions in there, uh, for the last 10 minutes or so that, uh, that Phil or I can do our very best to answer and any that we can't answer here, we'll, uh, uh, we'll try and capture and, and get answers back to you. So uh, uh, feel free to pop any questions in in there. Um, so uh, uh, specifically, Phil, what what is doing now in terms of supporting your your existing uh, pool of, of accounting partners uh, to help them help their clients through this? Yeah, totally. So we are planning to be application ready by Monday for this new scheme. So our devs are going to be um, are going to be working kind of nonstop to do what they need to do on our platform to make sure that come Monday, you can apply for these grants, these loans, the facilities that government put into place via Capitalize. And actually, oh, yeah. one of the things we're saying is, look, you know, run the one of the great things about working on playing on Capitalize, doing the applications on Capitalize, is that you're going to get these lens. And these funding opportunities here, funding search is there, but actually it's still going to open you up to the rest of our panel of lenders. So the fintechs, the, the traditional lenders, because actually ultimately depending on when you need the cash will depend on actually, and depending on what this transmission method tend, will be for these loans, there are other options available as well, right? So, and the sooner you, 
The honest answer is the sooner you do it, the sooner businesses start applying when they're still in a strong position, when they're still showing strong numbers from previous quarters, the better for that business. But yeah. Capitalise will be application ready on Monday. And, and we're, we're kind of putting out the message that through the work Paul's doing, that we're doing, that, that you know, come to us. We know the answers that are out there, yeah. right? And we will be able to support you, whether it be with questions, answers, or just doing some research. Um, yeah. And if the answer isn't there at the moment, it's probably because there, there isn't an answer. But when there is, we'll tell you what it is. So we yeah. want to really be at the forefront of, of helping customers through this, SMEs and accountants as well. Um, and that's kind of one of the core things that, that, that we're looking to do. Okay, so uh, uh, the, the, the alternative is rather than go to each client's individual bank, who in theory should be able to support these, these, these loans, um, because we've got the we've got the replacement for EFG, haven't we? Which is the the eighty percent, and then is there, then is there a separate pot for hundred percent? I think there's there's talk of as well, isn't there? Yeah, is that... it's ever evolving, right? So I think yeah. what it is now will probably be different come Monday or Tuesday next week. Yeah, but the but the message here is that we don't need to be instructing our clients to go direct to their own bank by doing this through capitalized platform uh there's that their own bank are going to be included in that process anyway um uh, in 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 a likely scenario yeah absolutely uh, and, and the great thing is not only will you get that from your own bank but actually you're going to get access to other lenders in other areas and other spaces as well but might be able to facilitate things quicker um the message we're hearing is, is you know the lenders are actively looking to support okay. um, our funding specialists are actively there having conversations every day so you know we're really trying to kind of be at the forefront yep. the, I, I guess the, the real challenge though that that we're not going to know until we get into next week is is I've I've gone through lending processes with our bankers in the past to a Barclays it takes forever it's like yeah. even to get even to get an overdraft it can take like two or three weeks um, and it comes back to that point, rent's got to be paid next week. Uh, PAYE's got to be paid now. Um, so it's going to be really interesting, isn't it, to see how the banks deal with that in terms of how, how do they bypass their um, historical, antiquated um, uh, approval processes that naturally just take forever. Yeah, and, and do you know what, the, the good thing is that... that that the banks that we work with, yes, whilst they have that kind of traditional lending, actually you look at a bank like NatWest, right? NatWest have, have got their traditional bank side of things, but actually NatWest are leading the way in the FinTech side as well. So they've got Esme, yeah. they've got Rapid Cash, you know, Barclays yeah. have got Market Finance. It's actually, whilst there are some traditional banks out there, they've got the technology to be non-traditional. So yeah. I'm hoping that, that that will kind of come to play as well and actually, banks will start to implement this technology that they've got on this side of the business to help this side of the business as well. Yeah, great. Um, so let's, let's look on the positive. What, what happens um, post COVID-19? Uh, what, what do you see in terms of uh, the bounce back of the market? Um, what, what, what are uh, accountants and, and I guess other businesses um, going to learn out of the challenges we're going to face over the next few months, whether that's Adapt it, adapting what they do, uh, being agile, remote working. Is, it, is this going to be the catalyst for change that we've kind of been desperately waiting for? So, I mean, Will, we, we go back a while, right? We've known each other for a while and we've been talking about advisory and what it truly means and if there is such a thing and, and all of that, right? Actually, this is the change of, I think this will be the change of the industry properly starting to embrace this technology that's out there now they see actually when things like this happen you have to have that technology in place and the firms that are going to lead the firms that are going to drive things forward are going to be the firms that have an app have a system have have processes and bits in place so when this happens again and do you know what it probably will now in the global world we live in we'll probably have another event like this in our lifetime yeah actually everyone will be far more prepared for it. I think remote working is brilliant. I'm loving the fact that like kind of everyone has cameras and microphones and all this technology available now. But actually, I think the ultimate thing that's going to come out of this, <clears throat> and which I think is best for everyone on this call, is that this is the catalyst to bring accountants and businesses closer together than ever. Yes. And actually, this is a time for 
anyone in the finance field to really stand out and show why they're important and why they're integral yes. to the businesses. Um, someone, I think it was Hannah at Futurely, I picked up on this quote this morning and I really like this. Um, she, she put on something she put out this morning, said, accountants are the NHS for small businesses. Yeah. And I, I was like, I, I actually, I really like that, right? Because mm. it's true, when we're sick, we go to the NHS. When yeah. a business is sick, they should go to their accountant. And, and actually, this is going to tie that relationship closer together yeah. for a lot of firms that are leading the way. Yeah, and, and, and the, the, the leading the way bit is really interesting. A, a, a good friend of mine um, uh, has been talking to a lot of the firms that, that he works with, and uh, uh, he said that the conversations he's had represent firms serving about 30,000 SME clients. Uh, and he had conversations with all these firms uh, and, and came up with a number of observations that, that are coming back from those firms. And the one that stuck out, stuck out for me um, was that very, very few, and he then re-emphasized in a note that he sent in terms of very in capital letters, very few accounting firms are being proactive. Uh, so... I talk a lot when I, uh, when I talk about kind of adoption of technology and the way firms are changing the way they work. And I talk about the fact that 20% get it and there's about one or 2% that, that have got it nailed. Um, we live in a, in a, in a bubble. Um, and most of you on this call are probably in that bubble. You're doing the right stuff. You're doing this proactive stuff. The majority of the industry is not. Um, and, and that's very true here as well. Lots of firms are not being proactive in terms of picking up the phone to their clients, sharing information to their clients. Um, they're very much focusing inward and focusing on their own revenue um, and not thinking bigger picture and supporting the client. So uh, um, uh, that was really fascinating for me to, to, to kind of see that, that, that there are a number of firms out there that are not being proactive and that's what we've got to do here. We've got to be there for our clients. We've got to show them we're here for their clients. This is the hero moment, right? This is the bit at the end of the film where the hero rides through the <coughs> flames with the data, with the, the, the dame or gentleman in distress over the back of the horse into the, you know, this is the hero moment. I think for, yep. for, for, for businesses, for accountants, I think this is the moment where genuinely I think that, you know, businesses need you more than ever. They need yes. you more than ever. Um, and actually, you can wait for them to come to you, and it might be too late. Or you can just pick up the phone and ask them, you know, how, how, is, the, how is COVID-19 impacting your business, and what can we do to support you? Yeah. And be it funding, be it forecasting, be it credit control products, be it whatever that answer is, H revenue, HMRC, you know, anything like that what can we do to better support you through this yeah brilliant right we're getting close to 10 30 so i'm just going to jump back to the slides to start start wrapping up there's a couple of other bits for us to uh, to to do here um uh, so uh, within app advisory uh, plus we have a member offer uh, with capitalize you can sign up uh, uh, to get 50% off your first three months with Capitalize uh, when you do that through App Advisory Plus, uh, just in case you haven't done anything away at the moment. Um, some key takeaways from this. I know Phil wants to run a quick poll as well before we, uh, before we wrap up. Um, uh, but key things we want you to take away from here, uh, Capitalize is more than just funding. Uh, there's a huge amount of education that, that Phil does with accounting firms in terms of helping you understand uh, um, finance function will do for, for your business and for your clients and right now um, helping you get into a position where you can support your clients with access to funding that that's going to be really important um, uh, you can book in a demo with uh, uh, with Georgie how do we how do we access that um, uh, Phil um, we can send out a link afterwards I'll send out a calendar great mm -hmm. perfect Excellent. Um, and this link here, uh, again, if you're going to, if we're going to send something out, Phil, we can include this link in here as well. This is the business support page that Capitalize has put together. Um, it's, it's really, really helpful. Um, it's going to be kept up to date. We're certainly using it already. Um, so uh, do, do take a look at that. There's lots of information there that's, uh, that's going to continue to, uh, to grow. Um, uh, Phil, do you want to just introduce this poll and I'll pop it up on screen before, yeah. we, uh, before we wrap up? So actually, we're changing our offer. We're saying that if you want to sign up with Capitalize um, and kind of go through our digital, accelerated digital training, 
we'll actually do nothing to pay until June to better help your clients support through S your SME clients through this period. So actually, if capitalizing is something that might be of interest to you, you want to find out some more information, then you know, vote on the poll. I can get our team to reach out. You know, there is uh, some real, you know, nothing to pay till June. We're doing additional training sessions. We're putting loads of support in. And obviously this gives you access to our panel of lenders and everything else. So, so if you're interested, if you'd like more information, if you'd like a, a demo, vote in the poll and I will get someone to reach out to you. And, and Phil, if we're going to do a, a quick mail out to people after the, the session, then, uh, then again, uh, we can, we can include that a couple of people already asking for, for the link for the, uh, uh, the information, uh, page. Um, so we'll, uh, uh, actually Rowan's just posted that into, uh, uh, into the chat there. So anybody that needs that link, uh, grab it, grab it there. Um, uh, so, uh, thank you for those of you that have completed the poll. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll include some information in, in the mail out, uh, following the session. Um, does anybody, uh, left on the call have any questions for us before we, uh, uh, before we wrap up? Uh, if you do pop them into chat or the Q&A. Um, we're, we're in a constantly evolving uh, environment at the moment. So uh, uh, certainly uh, Capitalize will keep that link up to date. Um, Phil, how can people contact you if they have any questions for you? Yeah, best way to contact me always is via LinkedIn um, or via um, phil.hobden at capitalize.com. Thank you very much. And, 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 and equally... On webinars. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, and and equally, uh, if, if there's anything that uh, I or, or the uh, uh, App Advisory Plus team uh, can help with, um, uh, do get in touch with us. Hello at appadvisoryplus.com. Um, you can get to me direct at hello at willfarnell.com. Um, we really do appreciate everybody taking uh, time to join us. We know it's, uh, it's difficult times out there right now. Uh, our clients need us more than ever. Um, uh, it's, it's our partners like Capitalize that, that are going to help us uh, uh, access some of that support. Um, uh, do, do get in touch if there's anything that we can do. Thank you again for taking the time to, uh, uh, to join uh, the webinar this morning. Um, good luck with uh, uh, the coming weeks. Um, thank you all very much indeed. Take care. Thanks very much. Thanks for joining us, Phil. Thank, hey, thanks for having me. Always a pleasure.